Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here. Today we're gonna be overclocking this Asus 1060 GTX graphics card for Ethereum mining. So let me just put you down on the table here. Let's get started. All right, so let's start by opening up MSI Afterburner. And the very first thing I always do is I put my fan speed to 80%, apply that, and then I start my miner up. So I'm gonna be using T-Rex miner for this. That's just my personal preference. And while that fires up, I'm gonna be talking about the three things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to overclocking. So the first thing is that overclocking is done at your own risk, you know? We're doing things to these cards that the manufacturer don't think we should be doing with them. So just keep that in mind. The second thing is that overclocking each card is individual. So just because I might find some numbers here that work for me, doesn't mean those numbers will work for you. Even if you have the exact same model of the exact same graphics card. That's just how it is. Each card is unique. Each card is individual. And the third and final thing is that I'm gonna be overclocking to try and optimize for hash rate today. So I won't be trying to get the most efficient overclock settings going where I get the best hash to watt ratio. I just wanna find the highest hash rate that I can while the, keeping the card stable. So with that out of the way, it seems that our card has settled at around 20.65 mega hash per second. So the first thing that I always do when overclocking is I just start by slamming the memory clock all the way down and apply that just to see what happens. Yeah, and as we can see, I've already started losing some hash power there. So I'm gonna put that back to zero. I'm gonna let that settle back to where we were, which was around 20.65 mega hash per second. All right, so we're back at 20.66 mega hash a second. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on our core clock now. I'm gonna slam that all the way down, apply that. So we're at negative 400 on the core clock and let's just see what happens. All right, it actually seems that not very much of anything happened there, so I'm gonna leave the core clock at negative 400 for now and I'm gonna start pushing the memory clock up. So what I usually do is I start with one big jump and then I take smaller incremental jumps from there. So let's start by jumping up to 500 and see where that gets us. All right, so we seem to have settled at around 21.33 mega hash a second. Now I have a sneaking suspicion that the core clock at negative 400 is actually holding us back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one smaller jump on the memory clock from 500 to 600. I'm gonna apply that and if I don't see very much of a change at all on our hash rate, I'm gonna try to bring the core clock back up to zero again. Yeah, so absolutely nothing happened there. Still 21.32 mega hash. So I'm gonna take the core clock and I'm gonna bring that back to zero. Apply that and let's see what happens now. Yeah, so our hash rate is already starting to go up now. We're at 22.05 and it's still climbing, so let's see. All right, so we seem to have settled at around 24.11 mega hash a second now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start doing smaller but faster jumps on the memory clock until we get some sort of crash or start seeing rejected chairs or, you know, things like that. So I'm gonna go 625. Apply that, give that a minute or so. Yeah, that seems all good. So I'm gonna do 650, apply that. Yeah, that seems to be fine as well. So I'm gonna go 675, apply that. That seems all good too. So I'm gonna go 700, apply that. That seems all good too. So I'm gonna go 725. Yeah, that seems fine too. So let's go 750. That seems fine as well, so let's go 775. And what I'm waiting for now is just to see a crash or anything along those lines. And then I'm gonna dial it back by about a 50 from there. 
but it seems to be doing fine so far. So let's bring it up to 800 now. Yeah, 800 seems just fine too. So let's do 825. Yeah, and we seem to be fine here too. So let's try 850. Seem to be fine at 850 as well. So let's try 875 then. Right now it feels like we can't get this car to crash, whatever we do. Which is a good thing, you know. <laughs> Well, seems to still be holding strong at 8.75 on the memory clock. I'm gonna let it sit for just a little bit longer because we're almost at max on the memory clock without a crash. So I want to try and take it a little bit more carefully. Yeah, all fine still. Let's try 900 then. And there's our crash. Okay, so I'm gonna dial it back by 50. So we're going to 8.50. All right, so we've settled now at around 25.55 mega hash a second. We got our memory clock at 850 and our core clock still at zero. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift the core clock to plus 100 and I'm just gonna see if that um, does anything, if that makes any sort of difference. Oh, we just had another crash, guys, and I very much doubt that's because of our core clock at 100, so I'm gonna bring the memory clock down to 800. So that's down from 850 to 800. All right, so I'm just gonna let it settle, and then we're gonna move on to messing with the power limit instead. And I'm just gonna keep an eye on it uh, to see if it crashes again or if we're good. And our current power draw is around 140 watts at the wall. Now, of course, that includes the whole computer not just the graphics card and our current hash rate seems to be 25.30 mega hash per second so let's start lowering our, our power limit so i'm going from 100 percent down to 90 percent and let's see if that makes any difference so on the wall not much of a difference there still at just above 140 watts and as for our hash rate doesn't seem to have made much of a difference there either. Yeah, still at around 25.3 mega hash per second. So I'm gonna lower our power limit another 10% down to 80%. We're still at 141 watts at the wall. Yeah, and we're still at around 25.3 mega hash, currently at 25.28 mega hash per second. So I'm gonna lower it further. And see what happens. Let's go 70% power limit. Let's have a look on the wall. All right, and power draw on the wall immediately shot down to around 127 watts. So that's down 13, 14 watts. All right, so the hash rate was holding steady at 70% power limit as well. So I lowered it down to 60%. We're currently at 113 watts at the wall. However, we are starting to see a drop in mega hash per second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it at 70% power limit and I'm gonna be happy there. We're pulling around 127-ish watts at the wall and we're getting just above 25 mega hash per second. Hey, so I was just editing this video and I realized I forgot to mention that of course after you've overclocked your um, card and you're happy with your settings what you should always do is you know you let it run on those settings for you know a day uh, two days a week and just look for you know is it getting the odd rejected share here and there is it crashing and then adjust your settings down as applicable to that and also do you have a version of this card if so please leave your overclocking settings down in the comments and we could sort of build up a little database of, you know, uh, overclock settings. So that's it. Now back to the rest of the video. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give the video one of these. I'd really appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of more mining content coming up real soon. But until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Goodbye.